This morning I'm going to preach you a message about that God gave me. I've been working on it for a couple of weeks. Um, and the title of the message is, What About the Storms? And I'm asking, the title is like a question, What About the Storms? Because we all have that question. We have that question. I mean, that's a storm that never about me. Well, why? Why, why, if you have this, God healed your cancer, right? Why are you having this issue? What about the storm? What do they mean? Why? Well, I, I believe God gave me some insight on that. But I want to read out of Matthew chapter 7 this morning. And, and then we'll, uh, I'm going to give you several more scriptures, but that'll be our scripture text today. Verse 24. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man. Everybody say a smart man. Who built his house on the rock. And when the rain fell and the flood came, and the wind blew. That sounds like a storm to me, don't you hear me? And beat on the house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man. Everybody say foolish man. Say a dumb man. Who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Sounds like a storm to me. And his house fell, and great was the fall. Now, the first thing I want you to know about storms is that storms are inevitable. They're going to come. You see, it came to the foolish man. A storm came. And to the wise man, a storm came. A storms come to rich men. Storm, storms come to poor men. Storm, storms come to people who believe, and it comes to unbelievers. Storms come to everybody on God's green earth. Come on, somebody, say amen. amen. Storms came to the disciples. There's three accounts in Matthew eight, Matthew, Luke eight, and Mark four. You find this that. <coughs> Jesus and the disciples was in a boat and going across the lake. And guess what? A storm came, Caleb. Well, it didn't just come to the disciples. It came to Jesus too. Yeah. Storms come to everybody. Come yeah. on, somebody. Yeah. It comes to everybody. Yeah. But I want, you, I want you to know something about when you read that out of Matthew 8 and, and <coughs> Luke 8 and Mark 4. Everybody got upset except Jesus. Yeah. <coughs> storms don't bother God. They bother us, but storms don't bother God. Yeah. And that whatever storm you're going through in your life, he knew it was coming. Yeah. I said he knew it was coming. Yeah. He knew it was coming, and it ain't bothering him. Matter of fact, it says in all three accounts, Brad, that he was asleep in the front of the boat or the back of the boat or somewhere in that boat he was asleep. Everybody else was saying, bail, bail. Yeah. We're going down. The water's coming in. They had to wake him up. Storms don't bother God. Yeah. We need to be like him. We need to get him in us. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> so that the storm won't bother us either. That's where I want to be. Yes, sir. Thank you. I want to be where the storm don't bother me. When it comes, I want to be like Jesus. Yeah. I'll just turn over and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be good? Yeah. Yeah, how many times, how many of you just toss and turn all night? Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody, be real. Yeah. You flip and flop and toss yeah. and turn. You can't sleep, get up and go sit in your chair, turn the TV on, and then you turn it on, trying to go, you can't go to sleep. Yeah. I don't want to be that way, John. Yeah. I want to be able to turn on and go to sleep. Yeah. I want to turn my mind off and yeah. turn my faith on. Come yeah. on, somebody. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. Thank you. 
you, Brother Jim. I want to be like that old story. I know y'all heard this story before. There was a family gathering. Everybody was at a house. And all of a sudden, everybody started getting alerts on their phones. And everybody, and sirens started going. And everybody said, it's a tornado that's headed right for us. And Granny was sitting there in the chair rocking. Y'all know this story. She was just rocking, rocking, rocking. Everybody running around, what are we going to do? Let's get out of here. Let's go somewhere and find a shepherd. And they said, Granny, ain't you worried? She said, no. And Granny, ain't, why ain't you praying? She said, son, I prayed this morning. I don't have to pray now. I know who's in the storm. And I know who's got the storm. And God has got me. Glory to God. That's where I want to be. Y'all know y'all heard that story. The key rock. Come on, somebody say key rock. Jesus rocked in the boat. He wouldn't even woke up if they hadn't got up. They hadn't bothered him. He probably like, why y'all bothering me? But why, why are you bothering me? I, mean, I could just hear, if I had been Jesus, I would look at them and say, don't y'all know who's in this boat with you? <laughs> I got control over everything. I got a destiny. Ain't nothing going to happen to me until that destiny is accomplished. So don't bother me. Yeah. I need to sleep. Come on. Those storms are inevitable. And they come to everybody. Yeah. Second thing I want you to know this morning, and you're not going to like it. Because I know. Storms are necessary. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Storms are necessary. John. And God brings the storm. You didn't want to hear that this morning. I thought you loved me. Whether he loves you or not, and he does love you, by the way, whether you're going through a storm or not going through a storm has nothing to do with God's love for you. He loves you. And if he loves me, he's going to bring a storm in my life. Or allow that storm to happen. Are you here? A lot of people don't like to hear this. Word of faith people do not want to hear that. Because they say, well, you just didn't have enough faith, Kurt. Well, if you had faith, you wouldn't have gotten in that storm. And see, it's all about what they do. But I got news for you. It's not about what you do. It's about what God does. It's not about what you're going through. It's what God's going to do inside of you. It's not about what you're going through. It's about what God is going to do in you. Shake my finger. That guy, boy, he'll shake it back in there. <laughs> Say, no, 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 no. Don't you, buddy. I had to be careful about the point of my finger. Psalm 107 says, For he commanded and raised the storm in wind, which lifted the way into the sea. God did that. In Acts 27, verse 20, when neither sun nor stars appear for many days, and no small tempest or storm lay on us, all hope of our being saved was at last abandoned. This was Paul the apostle in the boat. God knew right where he was going, and God knew right where he was going to had to go, and was going to do what God called him to do. But he brought a storm right in the middle of that, because he had a purpose in that storm. Yeah. If you read that whole thing. You'll understand that when they shipwreck on the Isle of Malta, they heard the gospel. God saved people, healed people, and delivered people because they were in a storm. Come on, somebody. God sends a storm. Jonah, chapter 1, verse 4. But the Lord, it says the Lord, right there. Can't get around it. The Lord hurled. A great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest or storm on the sea, so that this ship threatened to break up. God sent the storm. Yeah. Right. Because a man was disobedient. Y'all right. hear me today? God sends a storm. Yeah. 
Zechariah chapter 10, verse 1 says, Ask rain from the Lord in the season of the spring rain, for the Lord who makes the storm cry. And he will give you them showers of rain. The Lord makes the storm cloud. Yeah. <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 9, verse 14. Then the Lord will appear over them, and his arrow will go forth like lightning. The Lord God, the Lord God, will sound the trumpet and will march forth in the whirlwinds of the south. Yeah. Whirlwind, that's a cyclone. That could be a hurricane. That could be a tornado. Come on, somebody. Say, God did it. Yeah. It's glory. God. God. God sends the storms. And the storms are necessary. You can't go through life without having a storm. Yeah. And you can't, you don't need to go through life without having a storm. That's what you don't want to hear. I don't want to hear. How many wants to be in a storm? Nobody. Nobody. But I'm going to tell you, you need a storm in your life because it's necessary. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> There's three things <clears throat> that I believe that storms will do when, they're, when they come into your life. The first thing a storm will do when it comes into your life is it will reveal things that have been hidden for a long time. I want you to think about it this way. I'm going through this storm. I wonder what this storm is going to uncover. Right. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me this morning? Right. God sends them, Brad, and they're necessary because God wants to get some things uncovered that you've been hiding a long time. Yeah. You pushed it down and throw the sand on it. Every time a storm comes up down that Dolphin Island, <clears throat> it always uncovers a shipwreck. And then the times will go on and it'll get coming up in the sand. Next storm comes, you see that shipwreck again. Storms will reveal things that have been hidden for a long time. And you thought you were going through life, right? And everything was kind of okay. But here's the thing. Sometimes we go through life and we and and it just don't feel right, sir. Something's off. Yeah. Something, you know, it seems like I'm, I, I'm bouncing and hitting my head on a two by four. I used to play under the house all the time. And I, that was the coolest place to be. Right. Didn't have air conditioning. Get under the house in the dirt, it'd be cool. But boy, you pop your head on one of them rafters. Come on, somebody. Girl. You forget that day. You try to stand up and bump your head. As some of us in here keep bumping our head. It seems like I go, I get going, and, and I'm going, and I'm moving, and all of a sudden, I hit a brick wall. And I don't know why. Because there's something hidden in your life that God needs to reveal. Now, he can do it a lot of different ways. But storms are one of them. And when you get in the storm, you'll begin to see that something you've hidden way down in your heart, in your life, that you need to get rid of once and for all. So maybe you move past that point you've always stopped going. Yeah. Maybe you were abused as a child. Yeah. Maybe you abused somebody else. Yeah. Maybe you were wounded or hurt. Maybe there's a secret sin that's in your life that nobody knows about. Come on, somebody. Right. And he won't send the storms to reveal it so you can deal with it. Right. God sends the storm. Yeah. They're inevitable. Hey, and listen, I ain't praying for a storm. I ain't. <laughs> I'm sorry, I ain't praying for a storm. But when it comes, I've learned to say, okay, God, yeah. what's going on? Yeah. Is there something here? That's one thing. The other thing a storm will do is, is it will reshape existing structures. Yeah. It'll change it. 
I remember back April 27, 2011, when this great generational outbreak of tornadoes hit Alabama. Well, we lived in Tornado Alley that day. And they were all around us. Still makes Debbie mad to this day. She was down here taking care of her mama. And we were up there. And me and Molly and Katie stood out in our front yard and looked across the hollow and watched a, 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 a level four tornado go right across there. It still makes her mad. <laughs> still makes her mad. She said, why are y'all standing out there watching this car? Y'all well, it was way over there and we was over here. I ain't never seen one before. Saw one that day. It wasn't raining where I was. The only thing that was raining where I was was little bits of paper coming out of the sky. Look over me and they would say, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. We didn't live nowhere near Tuscaloosa, by the way. It would look like it was snowing. Right? But that, that storm, it changed places that you can go to today and you still it does not look like it used to look it changed it completely storms will do that sometimes you need something changed in your life you don't want to do it you're fighting God and he says I'm going to change it whether you like it or not because every time you kneel and pray you say oh Lord change oh Lord help me oh Lord do this well, he starts answering your prayer. Yeah. And sometimes you won't do it. He'll say, well, you need to do this. And you will not do it. Mm. You'll put it off. Yeah. I'll do it next week. Right. I'll do it next year. Mm -hmm. I'll do it when this works. I'll do it when that works. He said, well, it's time for you to change. So here comes a storm. And it changes yeah. your life. I don't, I don't pray for storm. I'm tired of praying for But I'm going to tell you, I've had some that come into my life that have changed my eternal destiny because the storm came. I probably would still be doing what I was doing then. Probably still be working where I was working. Probably still be living like I was living. But the storm came and God put me where he wanted me to go. God got me doing what he wanted me to do. Because the storm came. Because I thought it was a storm when I walked in and they said, you're fired. They didn't really say you're fired. They said, we're going to have to cut your job out. They give me, you know, two months to find another one. And that was great. But it changed my whole life. Yeah. I wouldn't be where I am today if that storm had not come. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Yeah. God says the storms, storms are necessary. They reveal hidden things and they change structure. And here's the thing. They'll find weak spots. Whatever's weak, they'll find it. I know you've seen the video. When, when Eric, Hurricane Ian, or Ian, however you say it, I've heard them say it different ways. When it came through down there in Fort Myers, out there on that beach, on that island, and there was a deal. It'd be the waves just be hidden. Hidden. They wasn't crashing in. They wasn't crashing, Caleb. They wasn't crashing. They were just hitting like that. And all of a sudden, the waves just kept beating. I mean, it wasn't giant waves. It was just beating. You know? And all of a sudden, you see a wall just came in. And the water flowed through that house. I've seen it. I remember working, um, putting roofs on and stuff at the island and, and Katrina. And you would go to a house. There would be a house here and a house here and a house here. These houses, the roof would be fine. <coughs> and this house, the whole roof would be gone. Not just the shingle, but the whole roof would be gone. Yeah. This is what happened. That wind blew Somewhere there was not there was a shingle that wasn't put on right. There was a socket that wasn't nailed up correctly. 
And because it, it kept on blowing, it found a weak spot. Yeah. <clears throat> and when one shingle went off, every one of them went off. <clears throat> Same shingles on each house. But the one had a weak spot. <clears throat> and the whole group was gone. Are you here? Yeah. A storm will find a weak spot in your life. Nothing else. See, here's the thing about storming, I believe. If you look like with Jonah, Jonah had every opportunity to <coughs> obey God. Right. If he had just obeyed God, he never would have got in the storm. Now, it doesn't always come like that. But because he wouldn't do what God said, God sent a storm to get him where he needed to go. It doesn't always happen that way. Sometimes God, sometimes God just knows what it's going to take and sends a storm anyway. Are you here to today? Yeah. So it washes away those things that are weak. Now here's the third thing about storms. They're inevitable and necessary. God sends them. The third thing is that God will keep you in the storm. Y'all need to hear that. If you know he'll keep you in the storm, if there's a storm that the devil sends like with Job, God kept Job. Mm -hmm. That's right. Here's the thing. Either God sends it. I just got to tell you the truth this morning. You might not like to hear it. God will either send the storm or he will allow the storm mm -hmm. to come into your life. Yep. God is in control. Are you hearing me today? God is in control. Don't ever think that this chaos that you're in right now, some of it you made yourself, but if you'll turn to God, He's still in control. And He can bring peace in the middle of the storm. He can bring peace. You can still be going through the storm, but have peace in your life that God is in control. Sometimes He won't bring you out of the storm. He's just going to go through the storm with you, somebody. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> mm. Amen. You don't hear this kind of preaching in most of places. Because people are scared. They say, well, that make God look like he's mean. God is not mean. No, sir. He's wise. He's good. He loves you. He knows what he's doing. But he is in control. Yeah. That's the I've learned that. Yeah. Those that belong to him, he will keep. Isaiah 25 verse 4 says, For you have been a stronghold to the poor, a stronghold to the needy in his distress, and a shelter from the storm. Yeah. A shade from the heat, for the breath of the ruthless is like a storm against a wall. It ain't going to overtake you, somebody. Psalm 55 verse 8 says, I would hurry to find a shelter from the raging wind and tempest. And that's God. Storms, <clears throat> he'll keep those that belong to him. Yeah. And the storm was not meant to kill you. Are you hearing me today? Amen. I already told you what it was meant for. It wasn't meant to kill you. It wasn't meant to hurt you. <clears throat> because God has got you. Second Corinthians 4, verse 17. And I want you to see this. And I want you to get this in your heart this morning. If you don't want to get anything else out of this service. For this light, momentary affliction. Hear what I'm saying to you today. For this light and momentary affliction. For this light and momentary storm. The storm looks, it's a category five. It's the high, it's beyond that. It's, it's higher than anything you can even measure. It's tearing up everything around you. It's pushing you around. It's causing great havoc. But he said the storm does not really matter in your life because what does matter is the eternal weight of glory beyond comparison. Yeah. What you're going through right now seems hard, seems tough, seems like it'll never end. But my friend, it's got a start date and an end date. Yeah. 
God has got you. God does not, did not mean he is not going to hurt you. He is going to help you. He will keep you. And if, even if he took you out of this world, my darling, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, guess where you just got ushered into? Yeah. Woo! Glory to God. Amen. I was at a revival meeting Friday night at Brandon Ralph Church. Man, and I was sitting there listening to the preaching and singing. And I looked and I thought to myself, boy, I wish my mama was here with me. She would enjoy this. Then I saw some lady, uh, I know her, and I ain't going to call her name, but I know her real well. And she got happy, and boy, she started, Woo! That's what, it looked just like my mama. And I said, but then it brought, it, the, this thought come in my mind. This ain't nothing. This ain't anything. This is not anything. Because where she's at now, my God, Woo! It's a million times better than what is going on here. Oh yeah, she's been here, she'd enjoyed it. But I wouldn't want her back here because where she's at now, boy, she's shouting and running and she's doing everything that she wants to do. And when she gets done, ain't nothing hurting in her body. She ain't out of breath, going to God. So what you're going through right now might be for a minute, but what you got ahead of you is eternal and is glorious and is mighty and is powerful. God has got you. Somebody ought to say amen in this house. Come out of the shop, glory to God. Woo! He's got something good in store for you. God has got you. God will keep you. And it is not meant to hurt you or kill you, but it's meant to do these other things. And finally, the fourth and final thing that a storm will do in your life, it will strengthen yes. things that are already strong. Mm -hmm. How does a storm do that? You can take a strong tree and the wind can blow. And if it's a strong tree, it will bend to it. It will wave to it. But when the storm is over with, that tree will be strong. Some of the strongest timbers in the world are, have been harvested from places that get strong stormy winds every year. And the trees that are weak will go down and they'll use them for firewood. But the ones that remain, they will be harvested. They build ships and buildings and houses and all kinds of things out of those timbers that have endured the storm and been strong. You say, what? I don't know about that. Well, in Acts 2, verse 2, he got right. And suddenly, and suddenly, there came from heaven a sound, look at this, like a mighty rushing wind. Yeah. And it, it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Mighty rushing wind. Mm. Now the way I'm saying that, it sounds like I'm saying rushing. Like the country. Rushing wind. Blowing in wind. <coughs> that sounds part like a storm to me. <laughs> Listen, so here you have these people who had followed Jesus, ran from Jesus, then followed him again, then watched him as he appeared and did all these other things, and they were still kind of timid, and they were still kind, kind of scared, they were still kind of saying, What's going to happen next? And Jesus said, you just go and stay in that room for a while, and I'll show you what's going to happen. Just wait right there. <clears throat> and they did. And so this timid, these shy, these people who were a little scared, who had been through some storms and just felt like the end of the world, 
and got ready and did this and went to go fish and he said, no, don't go fish and go back. All these things were going through their mind. They didn't know what come next. And then this storm come in. This wind blew in. It was a rushing mighty wind. And when that wind come in, them timid, shy people got filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. And cloven tongues of fire appeared on their head. They began to speak every language of every people that were in that city. Come on, somebody. And Peter, the one who had denied Jesus three times, the one who had cut off the servants here, the one who had run away to go fishing, when that storm came, he stood up and said, These men are not drunk as you suppose. Woo! Glory to God. But this is what was prophesied by the prophet Joel and was fulfilled through Jesus Christ. And when he preached the gospel, 3,000 men were saved that day. Sometimes the wind will make you stronger. Sometimes a wind will make you bolder. Sometimes a wind will make you stand up when you was about ready to sit down. Yeah. As y'all can tell, I'm excited today. Yeah. If I have any prayer for this church, yeah. one of the top is, Lord, let the wind of the Holy Ghost yeah. blow through this church. Yeah. Let the wind the strengthening power of your spirit sweep across every person in this building, every person that has been in this building, yeah. and fill them with power so that when the other storms come, they'll be stronger, they'll be greater, and because of the storms in their life, they will proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ to a world that is lost, yeah. to a world that is dying, to a world that needs Jesus. To a world that's killing themselves and killing one another. Yeah. To a world that is turning to everything dark yeah. and wicked and evil. They will shine the light. Glory to God. Yeah. Will you stand with me this morning? Yeah. And I will close. Yeah. I don't circle the plane. And I don't do two or three clothes. When I'm done, I'm done. And I'm done. We you bow your head with that? I'm going to ask a question this morning. Everybody who's here. If nobody with you except me. Are you going through a storm? If you are, will you raise your hand? Anybody that's going through a storm? All right, put your hands down. I want to pray for you because you're in the midst of the storm. Now, the storm could be for a lot of different reasons. Like I said, right now, those don't matter. The fact of the matter is that you're in a storm. You need to understand those things that the Holy Spirit spoke to you today. If you don't hear anything else, you just need to hear the Word of God. That the storm you're in, He's going to keep you. But He may change some things in your life. That may be some things that you're holding on to that you think are going to save you, but you need to turn them loose and put your hand in the hand of Jesus. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. He can't get your hand because you got your hand on something else. Turn your hands loose from that because it's going to keep you. And put your hand in the hand of Jesus because he's the only one that's going to save you. Now, for those who didn't raise your hand, you have either been through a storm, you may not be going through a storm right now, but you're going to go through it. I promise you, storms are inevitable. They are necessary. And you will go through a storm. So I want to pray for everybody. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have heard your word. Lord, we don't know. What about the storm? Well, we understand a little bit more of why they come and what you do in them. Help us, Lord, to receive that. 
Help us, Lord God, for everyone going through, Lord. I speak these words that you say. Peace be still. Bring peace in the midst of the storm. You got it. As the storm still raging, God, bring peace to their heart. And bring it to their mind that they might receive and just keep going. Keep rolling. Keep pushing. Keep pulling. Whatever. But they don't stop. I pray that over each one. And for those, Lord God, who feel like that they're out of control, well, Lord, that may be a good thing. Now let them allow you to be in control yeah. once and for all. I speak and pray that, that every person would allow you to be in control. Take my hands off the wheel, God. And you just take it and you drive it. Yeah. You should have been doing it all along. I'm getting out of the driver's seat right now, God. Come on, somebody. You need to pray that. You need to say, Lord, I'm getting out of the driver's seat. I don't know what I'm doing. Lord, you drive this thing. Your, Lord, you control this thing because I, I don't know what I'm doing. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And then for those who are about to enter to the storm, there's some that see the clouds. There's some that have gotten notification. Weather alert is coming. They know it's coming. But then there are those who are going to be caught off guard and they didn't see it coming. But whatever they're in, wherever they are, I pray for them, God. That as they enter into this storm, they'll remember the words of the Spirit that was spoken through the Word of God today that you got. And then they will look and say, God, what are you doing? I don't, I don't know why I'm in it, but I know you want to do something in my life. Yes. You want to change something. You want to get rid of something. You've uncovered something that I need to take care of. God do that in every life, either presently or in the future that, that's related to a storm. Yes. Now, Lord, we have prayed already for the sick and the hurting and the fleet. And God, again, we pray for them. Yes. We pray for those, Lord God, who are wondering that they will fall back in. The, to the will of God in their life. Yeah. Now God, I bless these people. I pray for them. And I ask God that you would be with them through this week, through the next week, and for the rest of their lives. Yeah. We love you, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name.